Did you make a New Year wish this year? <coughs> Any one of you? No? I didn't make one. Because on 1st January 2022, I made one wish. That my family would stay healthy throughout the year. And that's the only wish you could make after witnessing the massive onslaught uh, through 2020 and 2021. But you know what happened after that was terrible. There was not a single month when someone from my family was not sick. And the reasons included, but were not limited to asthma, COVID, dengue, influenza, salmonella, typhoid, and so on. In fact, um, I made to the news, not because I created something incredible, but because my two-year-old daughter was suffering from a terrible complication of typhoid. And there were few cases in the neighborhood as well. So why I'm telling you this is because all of these illnesses in some way or other are related to climate change and environmental conditions. And in 2022, the world broke eight climate change records. Ladies and gentlemen, the viruses, the bacteria, the parasites causing infections are happier than ever in the warmer planet. The vectors such as mosquitoes, ticks, mites causing or carrying some of these infections are breeding faster. Air pollution, adverse weather conditions such as heat waves, cold waves are making people sick. And at the same time, environmental hazards such as flood, heavy rainfall, landslide, storm, and cyclone, they are disrupting the routine healthcare services and also the supply chain. I was going through the 2022 report of the Lancet countdown on health and climate change, and the figures of impact are scary. There were 3.2 million premature deaths in 2016 only due to household air pollution. And 98 million more people were pushed into moderate to severe food insecurity in 2020 compared to the average between 1981 and 2010. And do you know the monetized value of some of these impacts? So <clears throat> only for the global heat-related deaths, the monetized dollar value is 144 billion for the year 2021. So that means we are living in a state of climate emergency. And even with the best efforts of the global leaders, it will take decades, if not a century, to turn the tide. And we are witnessing that at the time of an unrelenting erosion of healthcare affordability. So what can we do? So as a doctor, I was thinking that what can be the most powerful tool to ensure our health security? And I want you to look at these two pictures. The one on your left side is a life support system used for critical care patients. And the other on, your, on the other side 
This is, uh, these are some medicines which are often used for uncomplicated situations. So if I am to ask you that you have to choose between these two to save lives, what will you choose? Of course, some of you will say that it will depend on the patient condition, right? But what if I tell you that we have the power to make the choice even before a patient becomes sick or there is an outbreak? So I'm a trained epidemiologist. Uh, you might have heard the term or not. And what epidemiologists usually do is what police does for our society, investigate. And um, we investigate the theft of our health and well-being and try to find solutions that can prevent or respond to some of those problems. So I wore my epidemiology stat, back to our point, I was trying to solve the problem. And what I saw was this. What is this? Can anyone tell me? A pump well, right? With a broken handle. Now, what has a pump well with a broken handle to do with health security? What if I tell you that removal of this pump handle stopped one of the most fatal epidemic of cholera in London back in 1854? And the person who did that, his name is John Snow, not the John Snow from the movie. Dr. John Snow considered as the father of modern epidemiology. Back in 1854, what he did was so simple, yet so incredible. There is a book freely available right now for reading, his book, on the mode of communication of cholera. He gave an account of the most fatal epidemic of cholera of that time in London that took over 500 lives in just 10 days and he was investigating that epidemic. And what he did was this map. He drew this map by visiting the households. If I zoom in, all these dots out there, these are the cholera infections. And you see the pump there, the Broad Street pump. This was the source of water supply for these infected area. So most of these infections were caused by this one. And when this pump handle was removed, the epidemic stopped. Back in 1854, the world didn't have many antibiotics or vaccines. So that means a pump handle or a vaccine or a medicine or a ventilator cannot define our health security unless we make the right decision about their usage. What can we do now with that? How can we make a right decision? So I checked what Dr. Snow did. And what Dr. Snow actually did was making the right representation of data to make decisions. And today, we have data and technologies that can fast track your entire analysis, analyze huge amounts of data, and make your decision making incredibly more accurate. And there are combinations of technologies to do that. You can do that with mobile application that will give you geotagged health data. Sensors will give you personalized health information and weather information. Cloud and big data engineering can process trillions of data in seconds to minutes. Artificial intelligence can then take that processed data, model it, and make predictions 
from there regarding weather outbreaks, weather conditions, disease outbreaks, and so on. Advanced data visualization and BI tools can take the complicated output of data models and convert them into data stories made of simple graphs, charts, maps. Blockchain can simplify and streamline your supply chain. And Metaverse can actually provide you a virtual transact walk. So that means what Dr. Snow had to do with a pen, paper, his mind, and a lot of travel. We can do that at a much larger scale with a greater accuracy in a much shorter time. Now, I have the fortune of working with some of the finest mind benders of global health. And together, we conceived forecasting healthy futures. Forecasting Healthy Futures aims to bring together global health, technology, and public sector partners to bring greater attention to the inequalities at the intersection of health and climate change. And we innovate solutions to proactively address some of the most urgent global health challenges due to climate change. And over the past three years, we worked on many solutions. But the pivotal element of that was technology. And the most critical one that we worked with is artificial neural network. We tried to unlock the power of artificial neural network. Neural network is a method of artificial intelligence that has the ability to convert huge set of inputs and into recognized patterns. And these inputs can be um, numbers, texts, images, sounds, and any other sensory input that can be converted to data. And when we used artificial neural network to make disease prediction, we could make those predictions on a very large amount of data, and the predictions were very accurate. And that prediction actually was answering so many questions of ours. For example, where are the disease hotspots? When can you actually have um, an upward surge of the diseases or the cases? Or at what point of time, what intervention you would like to apply to control a disease? And which communities are most vulnerable and therefore needs to be targeted? Do you have a risk of outbreak at this point of time? and so on. But the question is, when, while working with this particular technologies and converting them into data visualizations, we made some realizations. And those are six S, not S for Sarkar. S for sharing. We need sharing of knowledge, skills, technology, and data to make effective solutions. And then solutions, all of these artificial intelligence, other evolving technologies or deep tech, they are game changing. But to change the game, you have to turn those technologies into real world applications to solve our problems. Third is scrutiny. We can't cut corners. So you have to evaluate every solution for effectiveness, cost efficiency, feasibility, acceptability, among others. Scalability. So you need to take this solution to a larger scale to combat the growing pressure of climate change and the consequent inequalities. 
sustainability. And for sustainability, we need more digital capital and trained workforce. And finally, support, without which none of this can happen. Political will, funding support, and technical assistance. And they need to come from the governments, donors, industry, and subject matter experts. We are right now living in a world of digital revolution. And this month at Davos, the global leaders have committed for greater cooperation in the World Economic Forum. So that means this is the moment when we unlock and leverage the power of these technologies to future-proof and climate-proof our health. In India, digital has become the new pronoun. And we are seeing a lot of positive policy changes. For example, favorable startup ecosystems. We are also seeing a lot of disruptive innovations. In fact, some of you would know that India has already assumed the presidency of G20. So we can make changes or change the entire game at many shore. So that's why this is the time to make the next big leap in healthcare trans transformation using technologies. And if we make these changes, I told you about the number $144 billion that we lost. And in 2020 Deloitte report of socioeconomic impact of AI in healthcare, we found that AI can save 380,000 to 403,000 lives. And the dollar value of return will be somewhere between 170 to 212 billion. So I didn't make one miss this year. I made six. Sharing, solution, scalability, sustainability, support, and scrutiny. Because I know that if we achieve this, then we will be much closer to our one dream to stay healthy. Thank you. Happy New Year.